We've heard a lot about Regavim, and I'm going to give you a bit of uh, background about what Regavim does. First of all, what Regavim is. Regavim is a research institute, uh, somewhat of a think tank. But what do we actually do? So a lot of it has to do with research. This is a, even though we're a small country, there's still a lot of research to be done. And uh, actually, if any of you read the Jerusalem Post about Al-Zanug last Thursday, there was an article. Uh, this is uh, Mark Ismailov, who owns uh, land in the Negev that is now settled on by Bedouin. Um, the settlement doesn't look like a lot of the tents that we've seen. There are tents there. There are shacks, but there are also uh, large houses. What Regavim does is gather evidence about what's going on. Here we see this is a legal Bedouin town, but we found that they will specifically build in green areas. Ronnie mentioned a, uh, a garden uh, for kids that had been uh, burnt down. Uh, in other places, they'll specifically build in those areas. So Regavim's job is to find these, whether it's aerial photography, people on the ground, and we're going to speak about those people on the ground very shortly, gather that evidence, and then initiate an action plan, and whether that's writing letters uh, to the municipal authorities, to the police, uh, to, and then eventually to the courts, because uh, nothing happens in this country without a court. We're going to, it's going to get better. Uh, Mayor Deutsch is going to be uh, speaking uh, very shortly. Uh, he was one of the, the major, he was the, the major uh, author of the report called There is a Solution, Yesh Pitaron, for the Bedouin uh, situation, for the crisis in the Negev. And obviously, you can't just gather the evidence, you can't just do the research. You've also got to put those policy papers together uh, to show that there is a, a way forward. Just examples of those with maps and, exam and ideas for how to solve solutions. We've got another book that we've got outside called On the Perver Perversion of Justice, and this is a research into the uh, Supreme Court and how it rules differently or how it even sits, whether the President of the Supreme Court sits on what cases, and we've done the research into it. It's not taking statistics. We're actually looking at all of the cases and coming up with the details of how it was set differently. Again, a professional report put out by Regovim. So what about Regovim outside of Israel? The, uh, the geniuses at Regovim um, realized that as much good work, and we heard from Minister Edelstein, we heard from Ronnie, we've heard from uh, Seth, as good work that uh, Regovim does inside Israel, whether it's lobbying the Knesset, going to the courts, writing the letters, getting the action done, at the end of the day, if uh, the Prime Minister gets a call from the Secretary of State of the United States says, you can't do that. We need quiet because we've got to deal with this, so we've got to deal with that. Or the uh, Foreign uh, Secretary of the UK rings up and says, what did you just do then? We can't have any more of this or we can't support you anymore in this. There's a lot of pressure that comes from outside that doesn't allow Israel to get done. And as Professor Israeli said, every red line we set, we seem to uh, go past those red lines and they fall by the wayside. So Regovim uh, established a, uh, the Regovim Advocacy Project, and the idea is to educate, to make awareness of threats, and this is really the inaugural event here in Jerusalem. But the idea is to take this and take this around the world, take this on the road, so as to counter NGOs that are already doing this outside and talking about the terrible things that Israel is doing to its native populations, as Dr. Fransman spoke about. Of course, Regovim's interest is the only and ever has been the national interest of the State of Israel. I do want to call out to the very special guys at Terego Vim. They're sitting up the back very modestly, but uh, Yehud Eliyahu, who is the, uh, the Mankar, the CEO of uh, Rego Vim, Betzalel Shmotrich, Director of, of Operations, Levona Kaspi, who's the office manager, regional directors, I'm telling you, I've traveled, I've, I've been doing this only for a short time, but I've traveled both with Meir and Ovad and Amichai, and, this, that's scary work, I'm telling you. I'm not talking about uh, in Yudan Shomron, the West Bank. I'm talking about going up north with uh, me. Um, we have to have cover stories. We need to be talking or have other newspapers and be talking in English and have this whole story why we're there, why we're not, why we're there with a camera. It's scary where these guys, these guys go and they do it for the love of the land of Israel and they do it because they want to see a better future for the land of Israel. And then, at the end of the day, where does it all count? It's that amazing legal team, uh, Amir Fisher, who's here, who's uh, one of the stars of the Supreme Court on our side, and we need these stars, and it's only new that we have these stars, Bo Boaz Arazi, Avram Palmon, and of course, uh, Yoni Bloom, who's organizing all the necessary uh, PR work on uh, both the Hebrew and English press. So, I do want to... 
We're up to about eight minutes. Give me two more minutes. I'm going to rush through this. This is great for rushing through. I do want to call out a few other people to thank uh, today. As I said, Daniel and um, Daniel and Jeff. Jan Sapkowski, you couldn't be here. She's in the States. Charlie and Arafi from the PR agency who used. I do want to call my good friend Tommy Waller, uh, who brought a great group of people and keeps bringing hundreds of people back to Israel to volunteer to help build Israel. Uh, he brought a very special guest that I saw in the crowd, uh, Rosemary uh, Schindler who I believe is the granddaughter of Oscar Schindler. It's a pleasure to, to have you here, and thank you very much for coming. And uh, everyone in this crowd holds your grandfather up in, in very high terms. I just want to go and... We've been speaking about the Negev, but Regevim isn't only about the Negev. Um, I wish it was. I wish our only issues were in the Negev. Just right near Tel Aviv, there's a town called Damash, which is now the UN is trying to claim as an independent Palestinian village. It's five miles from the airport, 10 miles from Tel Aviv, right between Lod and Ramle. In Jerusalem, and we do work here, there were three buildings put up right on the Begin uh, Highway um, and uh, needed to be dealt with because these were a security threat. And as you can see, there were Bedouin tents surrounding it in the Galil. And again, it was mentioned, this is Hameron. This is that very special nature reserve, Hameron, where Regavim put together a massive research document and then took it to, to court to try and stop this illegal building happening within. I'm not going to go into this report, but some of our work, and we have to get these exclusives. People forget about stuff in Israel after a minute. Um, but we have to get these exposés on the news, and that's what we do in Israel, because as Ronnie said, we need Israelis to find out about this, because there are few who do know what's going on outside of Tel Aviv, outside of Jerusalem. This is the border with Syria. If you remember two years ago on Nakba Day, the Syrians just came across the border. That's because there was a legal building right up to that international border, which is meant to be a sterile area. But those red lines were crossed very early on. Israel did nothing about it. Regavim reported these details of these houses being done two years before the events of that uh, infamous Nakba day. Only now that that dangerous situation occurred is Israel starting to take hold of the situation. And these are the houses being built also directly in the nature reserve of the Hermon. Yehud and Shomron, there are illegal settlements going up every day and they become houses like this after a while. If we leave them, leave illegal behavior to go on, this is an actual photo taken by Ovad Aran here, who is our uh, director in the Yudun Shomron area. That's marble. Um, and again, if any of you have traveled down to the Dead Sea, you'll see this on the way near Maledumim. Hundreds, thousands of Bedouins just claiming land. Why? How are they able to do it? Because the Palestinian Authority is supplying them with large yellow water tankers and water for free. Um, ecological damage. We're also tracking the ecological damage and reporting it. This is a dump site that's set up in the beautiful valleys of uh, the Shomron. Uh, and again, stealing water, drigging, dig, drigging, digging lots of holes in a, a system that is a live system. You dig and you take water from one place, it's not going to be available in another place. That's what a water system system's all about. And now what about the Negev? We've heard a lot about the Negev. This guy was critical to the Negev, David Ben-Gurion, our first Prime Minister. He said the Negev is actually the test of the nation of Israel. And we've heard about the claims. But what about, what does Regavim do about that? Well, we first of all try and let people know that it's not about tents anymore. That is a myth, the Zionist myth of the 60s and the 70s. They have settled down. They're not nomadic anymore. They are taking the land and they have the NGOs with millions and millions of dollars, and I'm not going to get into the figures, and I have them here, and they're producing beautiful figures, uh, maps like this, and going to the Goldberg Commission and saying, look, there are only 45, and these yellow dots are those 35, now 35, they used to be 45, but Israel legalized 10 of their towns, um, and we're going to zoom in, and we're actually, by the time we zoom in, we're going to go to aerial photography, and we see that yellow dot, I don't know if you can make it out, it's right there. One yellow dot, but around it, and again, anyone today with a computer and internet connection can go on Google Earth and you can see this. There are no 45 towns, there are 2,100 towns, but how do we prove this? How do we prove this to Judge Goldberg? We said, okay, let's now put a marking around uh, the Bedouin uh, encampments where they're living uh, and zoom out and let's see what that does and how that compares to those 45 yellow dots they put. So we've still got that one dot, but we've got about 10 red areas. Uh, we've now got about 20 red areas, still one dot. We now have about 30 red areas and still that one dot. We zoom out more, and again, we're quite far out. We can see 
already um, other towns around it. We have about four yellow dots, but we have about 100 red and came into 100 villages, Bedouins. We're really zoomed up now. The red up the top is actually Yehuda, uh, the southern West Bank. The purples here are Nevatim Air Base and another uh, large tank base down the south. Beersheva, 200,000 residents is that blue area here on the left. The pink areas are the uh, seven uh, towns, including Rahat, which you can't see, it's up to the north. The red areas are those zoomed out areas. This is taken directly from GIS, Geographical Information Systems. So we proved to them, say, where's the 45 dots? You can see here these 45 yellow dots, but what about everyone else? What about the other Bedouins? What are you going to do about that? They promise the situation will be solved legalize the 45 towns, it's, abs it's an absolute lie. And tomorrow, those of you joining us on the buses are going to see that with their own eyes. I want to move on. What well, everyone here has hinted to or spoken about, that connection, and I want to bring up Mayor Deutsch, because that connection between Lebanon in the north, Egypt in the south, Jordan in the east, and Gaza in the west is being connected um, by these illegal towns and settlements. So these are some of the houses. Mayor, if you could uh, make your way up here. Daniel, do you uh, would like to? Nope. OK, some of the houses, and we're going to see these tomorrow. These are the illegal houses being built. And these are the photos that Mayor took. Mayor is an exceptional guy. He's a very modest guy, so he's uh, not even smiling at that. Oh, I've got a smile out of him. Um, he's an amazing guy. He took these photos, and he's going to tell us more about what is the solution, because it's, I don't want anyone leaving here on, a, on an unhappy note, a pessimistic note. I'm going to come back up after Mayor. Thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, take it away.